So you just finished a day of shoot and you have tons of footage. Now, how are you going to organize and make sure that you can find the files and the clips that you want for your edit? Here are three reasons why you should embrace metadata. First, metadata allows you to search and filter through your clips with incredible precision. So let's look at uh, one clip in particular uh, that I have uh, chosen here amongst 530 different other clips that were shot during a, a, a two-day shoot uh, during harvest time in, in, in Lebanon. And in this clip, uh, there's a boy carrying a crate of, uh, of grapes. So now that I've seen what uh, the clip is about, I'm going to uh, input some of the information that I think are interesting and that will help me find again this, um, this clip afterwards. To input the metadata, there's a panel that you can find in the media page, which I am right now, or in the edit page, and it's located at the top right next to the inspector. So I'm going to click on it. And here I'm going to see a list of uh, predetermined fields that I've chosen before. Uh, I'll, I'll go in the next tutorial more into details. So first of all, I'm going to input the description. In this project in particular, I have a list of description that I'm using that are kind of standard. So it allows me also to, to better sort through my, through my files afterwards. And in this case here, this is called Create Carrying. There are no specific comments. Keywords is a field in which if you input keywords before in DaVinci Resolve, they will appear again as you start typing the letters. Uh, so here we have boy. You can see it was there before. So this is boy. I'm going to use front to back. It helps me also better understand the sh how the shot is. This is the second shot of scene 24. The angle is at eye level. It's a camera move, is a pan right. It's a medium shot. It's a good take. And it's camera number two. So now that I've put these information into the clip, the first thing I like to do is to change the file name. As you can see, by default, all the file names are coming from the camera and usually it's date with some kind of, of numbers afterwards, even if you can fix that. Now, by default, the clip name is exactly the same as the file name. And there's something powerful about the usage of keywords and descriptions and all this metadata is that you can change the clip name to something more readable. So this is how you do this. You select all the uh, files that you want to change the names for. Uh, so on a Mac, it's Command A. And then you right click on them and you go to Clip Attributes. And then you're going to go to the tab that is called Name. And here you're going to have something, the, the clip name, which is which is basically the same as the file name to start with. Now you're going to delete this one and instead you're going to put some of those metadata that will that you have input for every one of your files uh, to show as the clip name. So to do that, first of all, you have to put the percentage sign and then you're going to start inputting the name of the uh, of the metadata that you want to use. So in this case, I want to use the description as the first information. So I'm going to type this. And as, as you can see, you can you can you can you have the description name here that comes up. So you can click on that. I'm going to put an underscore, leave some space between the two things. And then I'm going to put again uh, the percentage sign. And here I'm going to put the keywords. Uh, and here after typing key Y, I see keywords. And so now I will have clip names, which will have at the start the description of the, the file and then the keywords associated to it. So I click on OK. And as you can see here, I have my file name, which is here. And then next to it, I have the clip name, which start with all the different descriptions and afterwards the uh, the the keywords. So in the case of in the case of our boy that is uh, 
carrying the, it's his crate it's called crate carrying which is the description here and then his boy uh, comma from back which are the two keywords and this is going to be very powerful in terms of search which i'm going to show you in a second now that our, our file name have been renamed and we have now clip names uh, just remember that your file name still exists and if you need to go back to the original file name you still can do so uh, one of the things you can do now that they are ordered uh, in a more meaningful way with with names that kind of make more sense um, you can search for information through the search bar which is located here uh, it's this little icon above the list of, of of files and clips and you can select in all the bins or in the selected bins that that you have so here we're going to put in all the bins and then you can type and filter by the file name by the real name, by the clip name, uh, by keywords, by anything you want. So for instance, if I wanted to go through keywords and I want to look for uh, all the clips that have a front to back, and in this case is only this clip that we have here, with the bo little boy. Um, let's say I want to look for one that is called with, that has a notebook as the uh, one of the keywords. So I can find it here. So where it's uh, like a oh, oh, book. Uh, so I have two clips out of the 513 different ones. And what is interesting is that if I had to look for it manually, it would have been very complicated. So the search function is extremely powerful. But there's something even more powerful, which are the smart bins. And we're going to look into this in a second. Now that you've seen how metadata can help you organize search and filter your footage, I would like to hear from you. What kind of metadata do you use in your own project? Share your experience, drop your comments below. So first we saw how to put the metadata into each of your files, how to rename your, your file names into clips, and how to do some efficient searching and filtering. So the second reason why metadata is important is it helps you keep your project organized from start to finish. And as your project grows, so does the number of clips. And if you don't get yourself properly organized, it can get chaotic pretty quickly. Now, what we can do with metadata is that you can automatically sort your clips into bins based on their tags and on the different fields and the metadata that you input. And as you add new ones with those same metadata, they will be put into those bins. And this is the power of smart bins. So let me show you how this works. So here we've done some search uh, with, with the, the search function. Just going to remove this. And now we have all our clips in here with their clip names renamed. Now in the smart bin function, which is at the lower left in the, in the media page, smart bin, you have already keywords that exist. So basically all the keywords that you have created, let me make this a bit bigger, all the keywords that have been already created will be put here by default. And if you, for instance, if you click on them, for instance, this is crossroad and I have just one clip there with it. Uh, if I'm looking at uh, driver uh, here as well, I'm gonna have just one clip of this, uh, all the shots taken from the back. So like this one or this one. And so it's one way of, of automatically having these uh, done or clips with grapes. Uh, and here I have my different cutaways with my different grapes uh, shots. So if I want to look for a, one specific uh, keyword, just one, I can I can look into this. Now, the other thing you can do is to create your own smart bin. So let me collapse this. And to do this, you are going to right click into the in here in the smart bin and you can do add smart bin. And it's going to ask you for uh, for the name. Uh, so here this is uh, say boy. And you're going to have different information that you're going to and rules that you're going to follow. For instance, here in my uh, shot and scenes, I want the description to, or I want the description or the keywords, for instance, I want the keywords to contain boy. And if he, if I look here, if I just, by the initial filtering, I will see all the clips. If I create this, I will see all the clips where there are boys uh, inside of it. Okay. Uh, and then if I want to redefine this, I'm just going to go to this one. I'm going to edit again. And I'm going to add another uh, rule. In this case, the keywords, I want the keyword to contain also scissor. 
So basically, boys that are cutting the grapes with a scissor. I click on OK. And now I have only the clips where I have boy and I have scissor on them. So these are all the clips here that have been uh, selected. Uh, for instance, if I want to add another information to make it more precise, I'm going to add another one and say the keyword contains talk. So this is when I had some conversation with some of the boys. And here there's only six, eight clips of these where I have conversation with the different uh, with the different boys that are cutting the vines with the scissors and there are basically we have a talk. So smart bins are extremely powerful and every time I'm going to add a new clip into this, it will be it will be shown. So let me let me show you how this can go. Okay, I'm just gonna take another random clip in here from this one. I'm going to take this one and I'm just going to add here boy. I'm going to add scissor and I'm going to add talk. And so this clip now is called create emptying scissor blue blue tractor boy etc talk. And if I go to the smart bin boy, it's going to appear which is here, this one, because it, it has the metadata and the information and the keywords that I want to filter in that a specific smart bin. So here what it can do, and it's very helpful, is that every time you're going to add a new clip that has the information that you want and to appear in your smart bin, it will do so automatically. So you don't have to think about it too much. And this is also one of the reasons why you need to have an organization of how to create your keywords, what kind of keywords you want to use, what kind of uh, descriptions you want to use, etc. But as I said, this is going to be uh, looked into in one of our next tutorial. Are you already using smart bins in your project? Share your experience, drop your comments below. Finally, metadata is crucial when you're collaborating with the team. So properly labeled metadata ensures that everyone is on the same page, whether you're working with an assistant editor or a post-production team. And so when everyone uses the same metadata tags, it makes the workflow seamless and minimize errors. So if you want to use, let's say, in your descriptions, the boy or girl or man, or you have to, to decide exactly the terms you want to use. So there is no mismatch between, between the different uh, team members. Uh, same thing in terms of the angles you want to use. Is it eye level? Is it... Uh, frontal, etc. You have to decide on these information first, and it makes the organization of your and the, the organization of your of your clips uh, much more easily handled uh, by different people as long as everyone is on the same page. Now, while DaVinci Resolve's metadata system is very powerful, managing it it can be very time-consuming, especially in the early stage when you get your footage into DaVinci Resolve. If you're going to input all your metadata by just typing them in the metadata panel, as we've seen before, this is going to take a lot of time, especially if you realize that there are things you want to change afterwards. And it could be much faster if you copy and paste things uh, from, from one to the next. And it's, as I said, if you have a lot of footage, a lot of files, it is very cumbersome. So this is where the uh, Footage Organizer app comes in. So let me show you how this works. Uh, so basically here I have uh, I have uh, files uh, and I'm going to focus on the on the first one in the first day of shoot uh, from two different cameras. Uh, so these are all my 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 files from one camera and then here's are the files from the second camera and I want to bring them into DaVinci Resolve with their metadata. And I'm going to use the uh, footage organizer app that we've developed to do so. And it's very simple to, to, to use. The first thing is that you bring the app and the app is, is basically entering the path of the directory you want to search. So in this case, I want to go in my T7 here and this is the directory I want to use. Uh, where all those uh, folders are located. And now I want to enter the path where I want to save the CSV file I'm going to be creating, and I'm going to put this very simply on the desktop. Choose. And, and then I click on Generate, 
And as we can see here in the desktop, I have a file called my footage folder.csv and I can click and open the file. And it will, in my case, open it into uh, LibreOffice as a CSV file. I click OK. So now all my files are listed in alphabetical order according to the folder in which they are. And in, if you have different levels of folder, uh, a folder within a folder, within a folder, uh, you'll be able to have different levels of folders to see where your files are exactly in. So here we have uh, from our two folders all the different files, so the 230 something out of them. And there are some pre-set columns uh, with description keywords, camera number, shot scene, etc. that I, I find it kind of useful and there are things that I usually put in there. If you want to add anything, a column, you can do that. It's a CSV file at the end of the day. So now what you're going to do is basically watch your footage, which you always have to do, all of them. And as, as you watch them, you're going to fill the different information needed from that specific file. So this is what we're going to do now. I'll see you in a second. Now I have put all the description and keywords and all the information I wanted. And what is nice with a CSV file or an Excel sheet, it's basically that you can look at your different descriptions and see if there are some common denominators so that you can reduce as much as you can uh, your the list of descriptions that you have and look at the different keywords that you use and make sure that they're all the same uh, properly if they want to illustrate something that is the same. Uh, and then you can look at your, your scenes and the different shots, etc. potentially the takes. And I think it's very interesting because on a CSV file, you can manipulate your data in a way that is so much easier than, than actually uh, what you would do in DaVinci Resolve to do that. And the next step, once you have your file that is ready and done and prepped up, uh, you're just going to import it into DaVinci so that all your files will be populated with the proper metadata. How much time do you think you're going to save using CSV to import your data, your metadata into DaVinci Resolve? Try the app and let me know. We're back into DaVinci Resolve to import your, your, your clips and your metadata. And this is very simple. The first thing that you can do is go to your clips, basically where they are located. And in this case here, these are uh, these are the ones. Uh, I'm just going to take the Nikon, this one, and this one. And I'm going to drag them into the master file in the media page. And here they will all appear. So I will see all my different uh, file names with the different clip names. And if I click on any of them, you will see that uh, there's no there's no information uh, there's no metadata they, uh, available at all in any of the clips. To import the metadata from your CSV file, it's very simple. You go to File, then you click on Import Metadata to the Media Pool, and you're going to select the uh, the CSV file in this case, which is my footage folders .csv and you click on open and here it's going to ask you the import option so usually here it's match uh, using the file name because they are ex exact same ones and i'm going to remove this match using clip start and encode because i don't need that and in the option i'm just going to use only update me that data items with entries in the source file i click on ok and it would say 230 media pools clips have been updated and as you can see right away from that clip that has been selected I would have my description, uh, my keywords, uh, the move, or any kind of information that I would have taken uh, for that clip that I have vision before. So let's say this is this is another one. You can see workers in the vineyard, vineyard, etc. Now, if you want to change your CSV file, so go back to your CSV file and change some of the things inside of it and re-import that, you can do that. It will over write all the things you've done before. So you can always find the, the good solution of organizing your clips. And this is one of the great way where the, uh, the, the, the footage organizer app can be extremely helpful to prepare all the files and the metadata before importing them into DaVinci Resolve. So to recap, metadata in DaVinci Resolve helps you be more efficient in filtering and searching your metadata in better organizing your clips and footage and for better collaboration. 
And the Footage Organizer app will also help you get your metadata into DaVinci Resolve in a more efficient way. If you found this tutorial helpful, like, subscribe, and hit the bell icon for more content. And if you want to try the Footage Organizer app, I will leave the link below to download it for free. In the next video, we will go into more details on metadata, especially looking at some common terms that I use to organize your clip and footage. Until then, be well and take care of yourself.